Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be looking at how I added LEDs to my Destiny 2 EXO mask. So let's get started. Sorry about the change of background. I've just rearranged my desk a little bit and so I can't actually use the usual spot I sit at. So I'll, I'll work that out eventually. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep this or change it around, but we'll see. But now this video has been a long time coming and I've had this mask up and running for quite a while now. I just hadn't got around to editing the video, but I really love this mask. And this is the first cosplay that I've added LEDs to. So this is how the mask looks on. And this is how the LEDs work. There is a little switch on the side, if I can find it, which can be used to turn the LEDs off and on. And this is how it looks like on the inside. Adding electronics to cosplays isn't as scary as it sounds. It just requires a little bit of research before you get started. For this particular project, the only things I needed to know how to do was how to solder, how to calculate voltages, currents, and resistance in a parallel circuit. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> but because we are working with electronics, make sure you understand sort of what you're doing before you get started. You don't want to break any of your electronic components and you definitely don't want to harm yourself in the process. But let's jump right into it. So all of the electronic parts were from coreelectronics.com.au and I'll go through in just a second what these parts were uh, so you can find them for yourself but also why they were chosen. Before commencing any sort of electronic project for your cosplay, I definitely recommend checking out uh, some basic electronic circuit theory, such as parallel and series circuits and how to calculate the voltage, uh, the current and the resistance of those circuits. I also pulled apart some old sunglasses because we're going to need those lenses later on. So here are all the parts. So we have some LEDs. We have a polymer lithium ion battery, which is 3.7 volts and 400 uh, mega amps per hour. We have an Adafruit micro uh, USB jack. We have a GST PH two pin SMT right angle connector. And we also have some wires as well. I definitely recommend that you buy more LEDs than you need, just in case. So before purchasing these items, I checked the data sheet of them all. As I knew I was going to have these LEDs set up in parallel with a battery, I knew that the voltage of the battery had to be within the range of the voltage required by the LEDs. But I'll talk a bit more about the circuit later on. So here I am just making sure that the LEDs work. Uh, definitely check this before and after you've completed the circuit just to make sure. Now these were super bright and they were gonna work perfectly. It's definitely going off the camera. Oh, that's very bright. Okay. So now it's time to actually put this circuit together and here's a diagram of what it's going to look like. Essentially, the battery is connected in parallel with two LEDs. Now the battery was attached to this little connector, which I decided to keep. I didn't take off the uh, connector and wire the battery straight to the circuit. I kept the connector and got the other counterpart for the circuit so that I could actually remove the battery and plug it into a charger when needed and then remove it from the charger and plug it back into the circuit when I wanted to use it. If you are using a rechargeable battery, 100% do this. But what I'm doing now is applying flux to the little tiny LEDs and using solder to uh, wire them to the circuit. I definitely recommend using flux for something as tiny and finicky as these. And just a reminder that because we are soldering this together, make sure you do so in a well ventilated area, um, have some sort of air extraction if you can or do it outside if you can't.
Now, as this is an electronic circuit, you need to make sure that all the connections are covered with a shrink wrap or some sort of other non-conductive surface. I later double up on this particular protection with some hot glue as well, as this is going to be near your face and you do not want live wires near your face. So make sure you play it extra safe and cover up any exposed metal parts. Something that wasn't shown in the circuit diagram is I'm actually using a switch for this so that I could turn the mask lights on and off. In the circuit, this switch lies between the battery and between the branching out that turns into the wires for the LEDs. If you're unsure of exactly where to put it, just put your circuit together and test it before, you know, soldering everything. You can definitely use clamps and such to hold the wires in place if you want to test this. So as you can see here, I've inserted the lenses into the eye sockets to make sure that any bright light isn't actually going to damage my eyes while I'm wearing this. You could just use a plain pair of sunglasses, but because I was actually going to glue the LEDs onto these lenses, I didn't want to use some sunglasses I was going to use again. 
The list was very finicky, but as soon as the LEDs were in the right spot, I applied uh, hot glue all over the LED and made sure that any exposed wires were no longer exposed and they were fully covered by the hot glue. I also found that the hot glue diffused them a little bit to give the right shape that I was going for. I then did a quick electronics test and ta-da, they light up! I then went about cutting out a small section into the side where the button could be fed through so that I could turn the lights on and off with ease. The button was then pushed through into this little cutout and was covered in hot glue to ensure that any exposed wires were no longer exposed. I then took a scrap piece of foam and made a shelf that the battery could be uh, put on top of so that I could easily remove it and I didn't have to glue the battery down. And if you do something similar to this, just make sure that the battery fits in there really snugly and it's not going to fall out while you're wearing the mask. I then went about to every single little connection and put hot glue over it. I made sure all of the wires were secure and weren't going to move. And that was pretty much it. And this is how it looks. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed adding the LEDs to this mask. I think it just brings it completely to life, especially as a cyborg character. This is just amazing. If you want to see more of my Exo Warlock cosplay from Destiny 2, you can find some videos on my TikTok, the username of which is on the screen now. And it is also linked down in the description below. And seeing as you've stayed here to the end, let me show you a sneak peek of one of the other projects I'm working on. I'm currently working on some Halo armor. This particular helmet is the Air Assault helmet, and I'm actually going to be adding some LEDs to this as well in a similar fashion to how that was done. This helmet still has a little while to go, so you won't see it for a little bit, but it's in progress. But again, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something new, and if you end up using this in any of your projects, let me know down in the comments. As I have been doing a lot more on Twitch lately, I also have a Discord now, which is now linked in the description below, uh, where people share their cosplay projects. So if you have anything to share, definitely post it in the associated channel. The next step for this particular cosplay is some holdfast robes. I've actually completed them, I just haven't finished the video, but that should be out soon. But that's really all I have to say, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you all next Friday. Bye!